baseball is dead. Rest in peace. But it's not dead if you're Trey Turner. Oh, no. Not if you're Trey Turner. No, 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 no. He had another home run yesterday. I had the uh I had the the statistics. I was only tracking homers because I was like, oh, like he fucking hits a home run every single day. So I looked it up before yesterday because I think he homered in two straight games or two out of three or whatever it was. And I was like, he's got to lead the the big leagues in home runs since the standing ovation. He was second. He was second to to Julio? Kyle Schwarber. Schwarbs. Kyle Schwarber, who I believe has he crept up over two hundred. Doesn't matter. Does it matter? Matters what to me. Matter? No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't matter to him. It shouldn't uh, matter to you. Does not matter to him. The lower the better. The lower the better for Schwarber. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't doesn't matter. Here, the, Is the your story mic on, Joe? Um, no. You tell me. It's not on. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Not on. Hey, baby. Uh, Jake, Jared, the story here is the Philadelphia Phillies unlocking championship trip. That's mm. the story. Why have they, the full they, they numbers have, now? They have flown they, they've flown in the face of past Philadelphia Philly fan base approaches, really in the face of a lot of fan base approaches to a player that might not be doing what you want him to do. You try to urge him along. Maybe you, maybe it's tough love. Philly said, you know what? We're going to wrap our arms around this guy. We're going to give this guy a big old hug. Big old kiss, big old smooch here. This is the city of brotherly love, Jared. It is. And, bro- uh, and brother, let me tell it. you. Trey Turner has answered the bell. Give him the numbers. Come Here are the us. numbers. Give him the numbers. Trey Turner MLB ranks since the standing ovation, which took place on August 4th. Batting average, 388. That's third Decent. in MLB. On Decent. base percentage, 430. That is sixth in MLB. Run score. Slugging percentage, 820. He's slugging 820. That leads Major League Baseball. OPS, 1251. That leads Major League Baseball. Weighted on base average, 522. That leads Major League Baseball. Hits, 54. That is third in Major League Baseball. Home runs, 16. Tied for first with Kyle Schwarber. Runs, 34. That is fourth in Major League Baseball. Runs batted in, 41. That leads Major League Baseball. Extra base hits, 27. That leads Major League Baseball. Total bases, 114. That leads Major League Baseball. So all it took was one little standing ovation. And lo and behold, Trey Turner is the best hitter in Major League Baseball. It's it's some look, and we're going to talk about this a little later, but the baseball gods, the baseball gods are always watching. And this is a matter of pleasing. You've made the correct sacrifice to the baseball gods, right? You sent the right lamb up to slaughter. They drank it all in. They're enjoying that brotherly love blood that that was that, that the fans spilled for them in the way of putting their arms around Trey Turner and cheering him to championship Trey mode. It was a big sacrifice for the Philly fans because those guys are assholes. Say so, hey, something. You know what? Sometimes, Joe, you like to walk around with that badge. Sometimes you wear it as a badge of honor. Like, look, we're not going to take no shit. We're going to hold our team accountable. You know, like maybe there's some double A batteries, some some D batteries flying around here. Maybe not. I don't know. Prove it. Uh, but we're gonna come to we're gonna come to cheer for our guys. And now this is just a different level. This is a completely different level. I mean, they've hacked the baseball gods. Is what they've done. The baseball. I don't know. If the baseball gods were like. Well, I think Trey Turner never gets out from here. Like I don't. I don't. What do you guys think? What a run! What a run right now! It's been a run. It's been a run. Uh, this series between the Phils and the Braves, highly entertaining. I tweeted out last night saying there are a lot of matchups, mostly in the National League. I feel like the the heavy hitter matchups are mostly in the National League playoff picture, but pretty high atop that list. Um, and this is something that I want to discuss. You know what? I'll, I'll I'll pause that thought for a second. This episode is sponsored by Knockaround Sunglasses, quality polarized affordable shades, including new MLB and U.S. soccer team uh, team pairs. 
Check them out at knockaround.com. Uh, let me ask you guys on that same note where I said Phillies Braves is pretty high atop my list of playoff matchups that I'm looking to see. Uh, I know I did not give you any time to prepare, but I think it's one of those things where it's you shouldn't have to prepare. You just snap, it comes to your head. What playoff matchup are you most dying to see based on how the teams are playing right now? how they're constructed right now, uh, maybe some rivalries that may have been built up over the course of the season. Uh, is there, well, I mean, there has to be, is a, a playoff matchup that you are dying to see this October? Does anyone have one ready to go right now to give the slower people like Joe time to think? I mean, dying to see, I, I think everybody really wants to see like, look, I mean, can we get the Dodgers Braves squaring off? Like, what do we got there? Mm. Like, what does that look like? Because I think those are two out of the three teams that would be favored to win this thing. I, yeah. I, I want to see the Red Sox in there. <laughs> facing off the <laughs> Yankees. Yeah. That's what everybody wants, Joe. That's what the folks are clamoring for. Mm -hmm. You kidding me? How is that? Is that I, it better be Sunday night baseball or I'm going to have someone's going to have hell to pay. <laughs> That's a great call, Joe. That is a great call. I just, I just don't know. I mean, in the American League, what gets you excited? Like, I mean, we're watching, no, uh, we're, Orioles, we're watching the Baltimore Mariners. Tampa Bay seesaw, right? Uh, so, Orioles so like Mariners you, would be cool. Um, I think mean, the um, Orioles Astros. I think the Orioles Astros looks a little different because you've got a franchise. Same. Orange, orange looks the same. Orange, orange. <laughs> Joe, you're hot right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're hot. I'm not going to deny it. You're hot. Um, <laughs> you're hot. <laughs> the Astros are a team that I think a lot of franchises look at and say, mm -hmm. you know, why can't we do that? W let's take a look at that model of success, of sustained success, and think about can we do that? And the Baltimore Orioles, even on the heels of having ownership come out and talk about you know, uh, how tough it's going to be to retain some of these young stars because of how mm. good they are already and what they're going to command in the future. Like you're hearing that. But why not look at the Astros as a potential blueprint of how you could operate if you're willing to commit to the cause? Sure. Young talent that they were able Justin. to lock up. Cue that sound that you make when somebody's dead wrong. <laughs> nobody nobody in their right fucking mind is excited about the idea of watching the Astros in the postseason I, I'm not even convinced Astros <laughs> fans are, are, dude are I, you guys stop 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 Jay, stop stop, stop. Jay, the Astros there's, stop. there's nobody no wants to see the Astros see anymore no. I don't know if that's true I think that no. there is there is a little intrigue to seeing if they can get back to the ALCS again there is it, like, a little bit I don't I don't think so. The storyline of Justin Verlander coming back to save the team and help them through their struggles and the and the uh, the lack of bodies that they had in the rotation as they're on the mend, he comes back and helps I, guide not them saying through the treacherous waters. The airlines. I don't care. I don't care about the Justin Verlander storyline. I care more so about like the Jose Altuve him. redemption. No, I, I don't. I, I, that's I not, love the Verlander. To me, the idea of a Jose Altuve redemption or a Justin Verlander salvation thing, those are both legitimate storylines. What they are not is exciting for the regular baseball fan. And I, I cannot be convinced otherwise. Every year, the Astros get into the postseason. It's the same group of guys generally. And everybody says the same shit. I am tired of watching these usually cheaters play. And I like... You, they're good. So by virtue of the fact of having many good players, great players, sure, there's an appeal to watching them play. But excitement? No. Oh, no, maybe it's like it's it's excited. like Jake Paul. Everyone wants to see him go down. I if I'm talking matchup They've that gone. sells, if you want to talk mm -hmm. a matchup that sells, it's Astros, Astros Dodgers. Range, Rangers, 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 Texas versus Texas, and Max Scherzer. For Justin, Justin Verlander, Ver 
they fucking hate each other, man. There's articles in the New York Post and they hate there's it's on film and they didn't like each other in Detroit. And now they're going against each other in their old age. Game seven. Cowboy. <laughs> Cowboy. <laughs> Speak to yeah, him, I, Joe. Let him know. I think that would I think that would be a entertaining series. Mm-hmm. I mean, the way that Rangers have been playing lately, a little better. You know, <laughs> nah, you guys are all fucking off the Rangers. Don't even bother. I'm not off the Rangers. You guys I so, so hard. Your right I'm, I'm, I'm no, kind of no, no, off no. the Rangers myself, but I think Verlander yeah. for Scherzer is is a good <laughs> matchup. That's what I'm saying. All right, yeah, there's plenty of good matchups in the American League. There's, there's, uh, <laughs> there's, you know, I, I don't think old triceps against JV is particularly exciting as it, as <laughs> things stand here on September 13th. Uh, we don't. <laughs> wow. is, is Max Scherzer even going to be pitching in the postseason? Yeah, he's yes. fine. He just he's fine. all oh he said God. was he like felt his eighth, something something. That's like the third straight start where he said that. So he wanted to get it checked out because it was some. It's it's not serious. If and we're you talking Josh about Young's coming back, Josh Young's coming back, Adolis Garcia is coming back. Don't doubt them, Rangers. I'm not. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> I was the guy that stuck with him when this question was posed. Don't oh, even, oh, spin zone, spin zone. I've been wearing arrows for the Texas Rangers for the last fucking month Jay, because cue it up. Cue it up. of a video um, of a video that may, maybe went on the internet back in May where I doubled down on Texas Rangers week. and we're not out of it either. By the way, sucking on that trident. Um, yeah, we're not the, out of it. The answer in the AL is the Mariners versus the Blue Jays. That's the Ooh. matchup that's actually exciting. That actually has fan bases rocking in both places with mm. some real stakes in the matter uh, in terms of length of last championship in the case of the Mariners, never uh, in the Blue Jays since I'm not even sure Joey was alive. I'm not totally sure how old Joey is, but it's possible he wasn't alive for the last time the Blue Jays <laughs> won the World Series. Um, no chance. <laughs> what year? 90, 93. <laughs> not, not yet. Not See, yet. there you go. <laughs> Joey's never even seen the Blue Jays as a world championship Joe, Joe club. is still just a tadpole. <laughs> So that's my answer in the AL. I think you got Julio. You got the pitchers that we've talked about for the Mariners. I mean, the Blue Jays and Mariners might have the two best pitching staffs as they stand right now uh, in the American in the AL. League. Yeah. Um, certainly a debatable topic, but statistically, you could make that claim pretty easily. Yeah. Blue that's, Jays that's Blue Jays could have had a way better rotation if other things panned out. We'll have to get to that a little bit later. Oh, my this gosh. Subject that we need to address. I don't think he's going to be a part of it. No, ever again, I, I would guess. But um, the... One thing that you guys failed to mention is that the Texas Rangers have won four straight baseball games. They're only a game out of first place. For all, everyone, put them to bed. They threw dirt on them. They were reading the eulogy. The Texas Rangers are a game out of first place. I don't know what, why all the negativity because they held first place the entire year, and then maybe they had a little bit of a rough patch, which is understandable when you lose your best players. That's that's more often than not what happens to baseball teams when they lose their best players. They're not as good, uh, but they've weathered the storm, and they're getting those guys back. Like you're gonna see Josh Young again. You're going to see Adolis Garcia again, and to be without those two plus Scherzer now having the triceps injury. And you're only a game out of first place with how well the Mariners have played with how much uh, the Astros have been able to just consistently win all year. They haven't had peaks or valleys. They've just kind of been there the whole time. And you had a very deep valley. And here we go. We're a game out of first place. The Scherzer thing doesn't help your case well, there. If he's going to be limping in into the into the final stretch, Scherzer, Scherzer's been here for three weeks. He's yeah, not. But he's not factored he's done, into he's the, done, the. He's done the well. First place equation. He's done well, but he helped you kind of not fall out of it. I'm saying, but now if he's hurt and he's you know like we've seen him the past few years limp into the postseason and miss starts. I'm not looks, expecting shit. I'm just trying to win a division title. And then I'm not. Gotta, I'm not even. Th- I'm not even thinking about October. Let me get through September first with these. Well, Texas what about Rangers. also? You got to think about Evaldi. I mean, he came back and did not look good, and I think he's only had one start. If he's like pitching bad too, there's a lot of questions with the Rangers. I'm not back on board. Just saying. Yeah, what All you right. got to understand too, like I told you, like I told you. So many weeks ago, probably months ago, (laughs) the team that has their fingerprints all over this discussion is the Oakland A's because, oh, oh, they don't. 
They don't. They didn't just lose. Hold on. You know what? They didn't I'm just, glad just you lose two out of three. They didn't just lose two out of three to Texas. I'm glad you brought it up. They didn't just take. They haven't just taken two out of three from Houston. Ruined our parlay. Ruined it. Yeah, and no, I'm, no, not, that, I'm see, not even going to say. I'm glad you brought that up. That's gonna, the baseball the last God. Thing I'm gonna sit That's here the baseball say, gods. I'm not, last thing I'm going to sit here and say, Dallas, is that I was the only one that got their pick right. I'm not going to sit here and say that. It's not about me. Oh, I'm not going to. Why would I make that the forefront of the argument that I was this the only week, one? I didn't want to do it last week when I was the main guy saying, who won, I'm and you guys saying, fucked like, it all up for us. It's the Oakland A's that ruined it, and and it's unfair. Yes, yep, yep, yep. Joseph and Jay Hay to blame. Because they started picking on the AL West. They started yeah. pissing against the win. And this is what happens. Now they got piss all over them. They got piss all over right. you and me. And that's yep. their fault. That is their fault. They're looking up mm-hmm. at the baseball gods going, fuck you. Not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the A's? You think the A's are going to have anything to say about this? Man, <laughs> you know how much research I've done on this? Man, this is a chalk <laughs> take and I'm riding it. Man. <laughs> and, and what the A's do? What did Shay Langle and Bangaliers do? Pissed, oh my God, Shay Langle! Like I, I, I legitimately sent Bobby Dynamite a text and asked him, like, "Are are you okay? Like, were you? I hope you're wearing earplugs." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He almost knocked the fucking train off the tracks. I know. My God, Albert Pujols' homer wants to be that homer when it grows up. Mm. That was a complete assault of a baseball. Justin Verlander. Justin Verlander yielded another record-setting amount of runs to the Oakland A's. Only in the Oakland A's world, of course. But that is the second time that they've posted, what, five against Justin Verlander? It's the most how much ever scored enjoyment did you get out of that knowing how much you hate Ben Verlander and you, uh, <laughs> you were taking it to his brother? <laughs> I, don't, I don't hate Ben Verlander. Um, and oh. it was just... Uh, it was. You could tell, like, he was kind of like, just, uh, I mean, look, I've, I've competed against this dude my whole career, and, and then I've watched him, um, and you could just tell that in the bullpen, it was kind of like, fuck, I'm warming up, you know, this is a formality, the, the A's, like, if we could just fast forward and give me my seven with one earn, maybe, and, and, and 10 punch outs, you know, I'll, I'll be fine, can we just get through this? And then that was not the case, he got through seven, five earn, but... uh he looked like he was laboring a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, shout out to Dallas for predicting that the A's would beat the Astros two games in a row. Really, really smart move because you had you had that one well, written down in, in told somewhere. You, told you that's written. Told down you JP somewhere. Sizzle. JP Sizzle was coming in, gonna slice it. Imagine dice. what did. this podcast would become if the A's ever reeled off more than two straight wins. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, buddy, we had seven this year. You forget about that? Oh yeah, you almost crashed that. your I, car on the way yeah. home, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was I think I was sick that day for that podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Odd. Yeah, no, odd. not odd but at yeah, all. That's that's you can you can blame Jay Hay and Joey for for going into the AL West. That's what happened. It's a hornet's nest right now. And they they just kicked it. They were throwing rocks at it, and they had me go to the AL West. And I mean Julio tried to do everything he could. To put his boys past the halos, they were just that, that was the baseball gods at play. They're like, "Look, dude, you, you got you got two guys on the podcast that can't get on board with you and your A's, and mm-hmm. you're picking the Mariners, and they absolutely should win this ball game. But I don't think we can let them win this ball game based on what your guys have just done. So the you guys the all AOS, the AOS God, the gods of the AO, AOS are on crack right now. I mean, and the and the Astros are bipolar right now. I mean, they get swept by the Yankees. Oh no, mm-hmm. Astros suck. What's going on with the Astros? Then they come they back swept and the Red just, Sox. Yeah, no one cares. And then they dick slap the Rangers and score fifty runs against them. Turn around and then just get slapped. Shut out by the A's. Shut, Shut out. Shut out. Ken Waldachuk six no hit innings. Ken Walla Chuck and Goose Eggs, but no hit innings. That's a bat to ball team, Jay Hey. That's a bat to ball team. Guess that's not exciting to you. Maybe you like it when they don't put the bat on the baseball. You should have tuned in. Hmm. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, also, I'm very surprised that Dallas hasn't taken this narrative to the forefront of the conversation on a national podcast. Um, so I'm going to do a forum. 
I think we and everyone else, we owe the Oakland A's an apology because we spent months banging the drum of the 2023 Oakland A's being on pace to be the worst baseball team of all time. Mm -hmm. There's a chance, a solid chance. They're not even the worst baseball team in baseball this year. I no, I mean, I think, well, it's been a back and forth between us and the Royals. I think you have it twisted. I don't think we owe the Oakland Athletics a goddamn thing. What I think <laughs> oh, wow. we do. That's all. What, what, I, that's all. what I think we do owe <laughs> so, is no. more criticism of the Kansas City Royals, if that's where we're going with this. Okay. Because oh. you're, damn, you're damn right that what they've done this season by being worse than the real life major league is <laughs> abominable, is in its own way, way more pathetic. Because one of these teams intentionally carpet bombed its own season, and the other one went into this season thinking, we can win some ball games. And the team that thought they could really win, that had deluded themselves into thinking they were a real baseball team, is actually winning at a worse clip than the Oakland A's. So I think you're right that maybe comparatively speaking, too much time was spent on the A's, but it's about not being enough on the Royals than it is. Getting getting the A's off the hook. Yeah. See, that's a narrative. That's, that's a narrative I can get on board with. <clears throat> All right, great. <laughs> that's a narrative I can get on board with. I think that's, that's a it. nice compromise. Okay, yeah. let's all do a group apology. Let's say sorry to John Fisher, and we respect him. <laughs> and he's doing a great job, and I'm glad he owns the team. Now, we, can we all agree on that? <laughs> yeah. What, what um what I what I haven't done. Look, look, like, like honestly, and this doesn't need to be an A's conversation. Uh, I'm just going to talk about it in comparison to what the Royals have going on because you've seen the impact, I think, of the fan base hopes when a guy like Bobby Witt Jr. comes up and mm. is playing baseball for your team. It gets you excited about the future. And then you start to see like a full season play out and what that looks like with a ridiculous talent like him and not much around him in, in terms of viability and what that looks like. To Jay Hayes' point, you have a team that is perceived at times to maybe not trying to win ball games, and then you have a team that is, by all intent and purposes, coming into the season, really trying to win ball games, and they're neck and neck right now, record wise. So for the A's, you have guys like Zach Geloff, guys like Lawrence Butler, a guy like Ryan Noda, who spent all season here in the big leagues, but it's young talent that since their arrival has really injected new life into a club. And I would venture to guess like the the best baseball being played right now has occurred or the best baseball being played over the entire course of the season has been since Zach Geloff and Lawrence Butler have have showed up. Um so overall record, yeah, not sexy, obviously. But if you're an A's fan, what you're looking at and watching unfold gives you some intrigue Royals I, fans. It's kind of like, well, this is what we thought it was going to be, man. Bobby Wood Jr.'s fucking great. I mean, you know, Pasquatch went down early and I think that dashed the hopes of watching another young player blossom and develop, but there just hasn't been much to get excited about. To Jared's earlier point about, uh, you know, worst team, whatever, what their pace is uh, in terms of the wild card era at their current win percentage, the Royals would be the fourth worst team single season in the wild card era. Only teams worse, the 03 Tigers, 2018 Orioles, and 2019 Tigers. Good franchise. Um, and then the A's would be tied for the seventh worst single season win percentage. Um, sixth if you remove the 2020 seasons. So, I, I listen, if you would have told A's fans in April that they would end up with only the sixth worst winning percentage single season in the wild card era. I think they all would have taken it. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're, 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 we are here for silver linings. Jay. Yep. Yeah. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Speaking of taking it, you should be taking my parlays at the DraftKings Sportsbook because uh, when I don't have these fucking idiots attached to my parlays, they actually do really well. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Football is back in full swing with another week of epic games. And who uh, did the Cowboys win, Dallas? <laughs> oh, buddy. Oh, I am so glad you asked. So glad. You mean the team? 
with the highest rated defense in the mm-hmm. NFL, that team, did they win? Yeah. Did they win? Yeah, did they, don't fucking look at me, cockeyed Joseph. Turn your fucking headphones up, bud. Oh, I don't 40, know if you saw what the Commanders did. Nothing? I don't know if you 40. saw what the Commanders D did to the Cardinals they, on Sunday, but you, I, I... You want to yeah. know what they didn't Pretty, do? They didn't shut uh, out the Cardinals. They kind of, because they the only that. touchdown they gave up was the defense touchdown. So, actually, mm, we hey, did shut well, out the Cardinals offense, which matters when you're talking about what? defense. Dallas Cowboys, their defense scored two. They actually scored twice, Joe. That's what they do. They scored more times than many offenses did on opening week. Yeah. Wear it. 40. Well, that's, that's not important for defense. 40. Defense Jack and the boys scoring. didn't even have to roll up the sleeves and get to work. Micah Parsons and company went to town. The fuck out of here. 40 to nothing. Wow. Football's back in full swing with another week of epic games. And who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? It's the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 on football and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Nobody's missing out on the actions these days. All DraftKings customers. That's right. All of them can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. Get in on the NFL week two action. Uh, with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app right now. Use the promo code Jared to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home $200 instantly in bonus bets only on the DraftKings Sportsbook with the promo code Jared, J-A-R-E-D. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY to 467-369. In West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Charlestown Races. All games regularly Regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Terms at sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms. <clears throat> I got to cook up a another parlay today uh, i'm probably gonna hit just what i do um but again the fact that i didn't make it about me and the fact that i was the only one that hit on the baseball is dead parlay it just speaks to my character um but you know who to blame talk, you, you know who talk to blame character what i said you know who to blame yeah well it, it's oh, i know who not to blame and it's me because i hit me uh um, but speaking of character, we have to have a conversation about one Alec Manoa, who was that your Cy Young pick, Dallas? I believe. No, I believe that was your Cy Young pick. <laughs> OK, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, that was your Cy Young pick, buddy. Yeah. Who is yours? Um, so Alec Manoa uh, <laughs> just decided <laughs> Who is he yours? wasn't going to show up. <laughs> well, who is, who is it? yours? I'm sorry, you're, you're cutting out. I can't hear you. I know you had uh... Jake. Who is who is Dallas' Cy Young pick? Do you remember? I got to go back and check. Yeah, go back and oh, check. I want to know. That's, that's that's tough. That's tough. Yeah, I guess we'll never know. I think we're gonna we got, we'll we got our team on it. Um, Alec Manoa never reported to AAA when he was optioned on August 11th because he was upset about the decision. Uh, Manoa reportedly has not even been throwing bullpens or side sessions. It's unlikely that he'll pitch in a game again this year. Dallas, you uh, uh, being a former big league pitcher, you are on a playoff team, a potential playoff team. You're in it. You're fighting for it. You're not promised it. It's right there in front of you. You're not guaranteed it, but it is very much attainable. You can. I don't want to say he's their best pitcher, but he was their opening day starter, correct? Yes. Okay. So your opening day starter, uh, a pitcher that has the potential to be the guy. Like, I don't want to disrespect Gosman. I mean, he, he's been one of the best pitchers in the league again this year, and as he has been for the past few years. Um, but Alec Manoa is supposed to be that bulldog, that leader, that guy that was supposed to take them to the promised land. And he had a very, very, very tough start. Gets sent all the way down to rookie ball, basically. And... Comes back. Everyone's like, "Yay, hey, he's back. This is great. And then is sent to AAA. And then he just straight up didn't show up. 
And not only did, because I think <clears throat> it still would have been wrong. I still would have disagreed with the action if he said, I'm not fucking going. But then he just went somewhere to work on his bullpen. He's like, I'm, I'm going to stay in pitching shape. You tell me when you need me. Like, I'm not going to go to AAA. I'm not going to go ride buses, but I'm going to go do what I do. And I'm going to stay in pitching shape. Like, that would at least have, have been... It's still a bad look. It's still the wrong no, thing to do. It's, it's not. A, what, Jared, that's not acceptable. Wait, that's, well, th- there's a difference. There's a different. I'm. I'm not saying it's acceptable. There's a difference between. I'm not going to fucking triple A, but I'm at least I care enough to stay in shape, <clears throat> and I'm going to keep my arm fresh. Versus, I'm quitting on my teammates, and this, I'm quitting on my organization. This is the big leagues. This is the big leagues. You don't get the option to treat it like summer ball. Sorry. This is the fucking big leagues. Point blank, period. It starts and stops right there. This is the big leagues. And what do they tell you? You don't like it, you got two options. Play better or go home. Those are your options. Play better or go home. And he hasn't played better, so he's decided to go home. And as an organization... In the situation they're in right now, that's exactly, that is precisely how I would interpret this. We have moved on. We'll check in on Alec Manoa in January. But as of right now, he has to be an afterthought. But individually, I'll tell you this. I know all too well what it's like to be sent down. Okay? I, uh, and, and for Alec Manoa, just for fans to understand, You have a three-day period when you are sent down to get your affairs in order, take care of any like housing, familial situations that you might have to tend to, whatever. But you have three days. You're sent down on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, you report to wherever it is you're going. Typically, if you're sent down on a Monday, you probably report Tuesday or at the latest Wednesday. But you're allowed to take those three days. Those are absolutely yours. So I have done that out of frustration and decided, no, you want me. They wanted this. They sent me down on the airplane. I'm on the fucking airplane. And I got sent down, called up to the front of the airplane, told I was going to the minor league. And I'm just going to fucking ride the plane out because tomorrow you're going to get on a 6 a.m. flight to go throw a bullpen in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then after that game, you'll get on a plane and fly to fly to New Orleans. And I said, eh, actually, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to get off this plane and I'm going to go get on a plane and I'm going to go to New Orleans right now. And I'm going to go party for a couple of days and I'll see the team in New Orleans when they get there. That's what's going to happen. And that's what I told myself. I didn't say that like that to the organization, but I said, I'm going to take my couple of days and I'm going to New Orleans. So you can do those things. That's street legal. Whether it's frowned upon or not, whether the organization likes it or not, because they're trying to build you up. They're trying to keep you on pace because you're a commodity. You understand this? You don't have the luxury of saying, no, I'm not going to throw a bullpen today. No, we got we got plans for you, kid. Like, you're ours. Okay? So you don't get the option to just go, no, dude, you know what? I'm not going to your AAA affiliate. I'm going to go throw bullpens at my pitching lab with the guy that I work out with in the offseason, all right? And when you need me, you let me know and I'll be... Absolutely not. Are you high? <laughs> that, that is never an option. Never, ever an option. So the feeling like he has quit on himself is what I would be far more concerned with than the feeling that he has quit on his teammates. Because if he's willing to do this to himself, that is what I want to address. That is what I want to clean up as somebody who has invested in this young man is I want him to get to a place mentally where he's ready to overcome some of the hurdles that he clearly ran into this season, whether that's physical preparation, whether that's being able to handle the mental frustration that he's dealt with, whatever it may be. But unfortunately, right now, for Alec Manoa, you've put yourself on the back burner. You've put yourself out of our line of sight with what we're trying to accomplish right now. <clears throat> I so I guess the follow up question here is: Is he done with the Blue Jays? Like, are you doesn't have to be? 
Does, I doesn't agree. Have to be. Doesn't have to be. He's got some serious decisions to make. I would say in the coming days before the season's over, not just in the off season. It's not just about all right, the season's over. How do I prepare myself for next year? But I think it's how do you how do you correct this before the group disbands for the off season? Um, not that because I mean this team has essentially moved on without him, right? Like he's not. Yes, they're not waiting for him to come back. Like he's no longer a thought in that room. They're looking at each other, saying, "We got to go with what we've got." Uh, he ain't coming back. Yep. So he, he they are moving on under the, under the assumption that he is not part of this group moving forward. Is this if you are him and you're having this come to Jesus moment? Is it even worth it to walk back into that room and apologize? or show face like what what do you do to make this right or are you, you saying like i've already essentially burned this bridge let me just i gotta just you know start with a clean slate with the next organization because my ass is getting traded for sure if we're talking about him still having an opportunity in toronto then what he can do is and i, I mean i don't know if he's still hanging out in toronto i don't know if he's you know still there and just not showing up anywhere i don't know what he's doing i have no idea let's say he's in toronto maybe you talk to the manager and you talk to members of the front office and you say look this is this is where i'm at mentally i i have i have gone about this completely wrong but i don't think i'm in a position to continue to perform this season and if that means that i don't get paid for the remainder then i get it that is what it is i I don't think that i could expect to be paid having chosen to not perform for no other reason other than I don't want to and I'm and I'm dealing with some shit you know because there's there's an option there right you can you can go on the injured list because you're dealing with anxiety and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that at all and if that's something that's going on that's what I said let's address it right let's take care of this young guy as an organization that's what you would want to do and have those conversations so if it's more than that then I think that will be addressed. If it is something to that effect, I think that will be addressed. I would hope it would be addressed. But I think this, again, speaks to where we're at as far as the type of player that we have in the big leagues right now, and even more specifically, the type of starting pitcher we have in the big leagues right now. And that might be getting really really detailed, but we talked about it with George Kirby. And he came out and said all the right things the day after, like I knew he would. I think like we all, if you just stepped back for a minute, kind of knew what happened. So you got what you knew was coming from Kirby the next day. And I think we'd like to see maybe something similar to that from Manoa eventually. Like, look, this is a, just a bad decision that I made. This is on me. I got to work through some things. I'm going to figure this out, though. And, you know, I, I think that would probably go a long way. But right now. That's going to fall on deaf ears. Like I said, the circle tightens. But to the to the starting pitcher these days statement that I just made, like you're not asking a lot out of these guys. You're telling them to pedal to the metal in a short burst. They're handled with kit gloves from the time they get to pro ball. And I think there, to an extent, is an effect on their psyche when they run into when they run into situations like Alec Manoa has found himself in maybe not being able to adjust to some things early maybe not having the success that he expects and and how to properly deal with that like these are things that guys are now learning at the big league level more than they ever have before these are things that you might be ironing out in the minor leagues so it's if just you, uh, uh, when I was reading the articles, they were saying that he um, uh, he stayed in Toronto for two weeks for physical evaluations to look at like his knee and his thigh or whatever. And then th- they found no structural damage. And then they wanted him to go to AAA. I guess I don't know if he went or whatever. It sounds like he thinks he's injured, that they don't think he's injured enough to be on the IL. He wants to be on the IL and not in AAA. And they say, they're oh, saying oh, so, you're not so- hurt. Yeah, so like straight up, like is there? Where's this article at that you read? Like I haven't, I haven't read that. Um, so then, what else could be a play here is if he feels like he was injured or something physically happened to him in the big leagues, and now you're going to send him down to AAA. We understand what that means here, right? He, gets he could less? either be, oh, buddy, 
not only do you, I mean, <laughs> let's put it like this. If he's injured and he's not on the major league injured list, and in fact, he's an active minor league rostered player, the pay is very different. Absolutely. But now, should your perceived injury or what you think was holding you back really flare up to the point where you can't perform? You're now on the minor league injured list. And that compensation looks a whole lot different than the major league injured list. Because if you're on the big league injured list, you're getting a big league paycheck. If you're on the minor league injured list, you're getting a minor league paycheck. So if I feel like I got hurt in the big leagues and you're going to send me down to the minor leagues without me being on any sort of injury. Uh, no, 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 no. I got hurt. Let's just say it happened in Toronto. Okay. Or in Chicago. I got hurt in the big leagues. I didn't get hurt in fucking Altoona. I got hurt in the big leagues. So I'm on the big I mean, league so injured list. Th- now that you raise that point, I mean, it makes a lot of sense if that were the case, right? Like, Absolutely. Would you... Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that makes all the sense. I mean, it very well could be the reason that we're having this conversation. That could be That it. would it's make that the most sense. Like, because if, after the year that he's had, because I don't have any inside Because what comes on next, this. what comes next is a grievance. That's what comes next is, okay, right. you don't want to assess me physically and or excuse me, how you have assessed me physically, you have deemed that I'm not injured list worthy. Well, I'll go get an opinion if I need to. And I don't think you'd be hard pressed to find a doctor that can side with you if you're looking for one to tell you that I am injured. So here's my paperwork that says I probably could use some rest. And the fact that it happened in the big leagues means I'm going to go ahead and be on your major league injured list. Uh, Or at the end of all this, We're going to have to hash this out, but I'm not going to pitch anymore because I feel like I'm in a situation where I could compromise myself further. Your medical staff has deemed me healthy enough to pitch. We're at a crossroads. We are at an impasse because I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to potentially further risk my earning power or career by physically putting myself in a position that I don't think I should be in. And you're not going to do what I think you should do. And that doesn't mean that it's what should happen. That's just what I think as a player you should do. So we're going to need an arbiter to come in and settle this. That very well could be what happens. Um, Jay, hey, what was your read on the situation when you saw that report? I think that's a lot of good insight there. I, the thing that struck me um, about the report was that when he asked for the, the checkups, right? He asked specifically on his knee, his back, and I believe his quad. And the first two of those jumped off the page to me because um, I remember when some colleagues, I guess, made the the weight jokes at the beginning of the season about, you know, he's he's too fat to pitch or whatever. And I definitely waved off that talk. I mean, first of all, the phrasing is disrespectful, but I, I waved off the topic even broadly because we've seen plenty of people pitch at at whatever elevated weights or heavier than you might think they should be or whatever. But where there's smoke, there's fire. And I just have to wonder, given the reports that started in spring training, how this season has gone, where he's indicating he might have issues and his performance. I just wonder whether there is a conditioning element in play here that is part of all of this. And that's not saying that he he pitched at a, he was a big guy when he was really, really good. Right. But like, if you're, if you're complaining of back and knee problems at 25 years old or however old he is at the big league level, like to me, that's, that's a red flag and something that I think is going to need to be addressed at some, in some capacity during the off season. Is that fair? Like, am I being totally, uh, am I? Nope. Nope. That is completely fair. That is completely fair because I think Lance Lynn has been a prime example of what you see might not match what you're getting. Mass equals gas. I mean, we talked to him personally about this, Jared, right? Mm-hmm. He said, I, buddy, when I'm a little bigger, I feel like there's fucking thunder behind it. Like it's fucking coming. Mm-hmm. And that's just like, that's that dude telling you like, and he said, I mean, he calls himself fat, right? Like 
But I, mm-hmm. I agree with you, Jay. Like sometimes it's uh, just a label and how it's been phrased, I think, has really caused people to just try to stay away from the topic because you don't want to get caught up in like in a part yeah. of that attack. Um, but you have to you have to consider it if these are the things that we have seen now over the entire season, which is an inability to adjust the production down the physical ailments i mean if you were to if you were to have all of those pointing in any direction I think they might all end up pointing in the same direction and listen it's not like large guys haven't succeeded pitching before but like you know cc sabathia is somebody who jumps off the like is the a recent example of that if we remember, there was a point mm-hmm. at which CC Sabathia said, I'm not at the proper weight in the middle of his career, right? And there were lots of reasons for that that we don't need to get into that are probably not relevant to Alec Manoa, but the weight is the relevant part. And it's just because you start large doesn't mean that that is always going to be the answer or that you do, that's not something that has to be held in check or managed at the big league level to pitch at an ace caliber level, which is what he did two years ago. And He's lost his strikeouts. He's lost velocity off of his pitches. I mean, it's 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 everything that you could imagine. And whether this is a big part of it or a small part of it, I do think it, there's something there's some meat on that well, bone at this point. And that's why I feel like, as an organization, you know, like if I was minor league, if I was a minor league coordinator, player development coordinator in this organization, and this is this is not a shot at them at all. I'm just saying, I, I think I would, I would be investing time in Alec Manoa, the human being right now, and trying to figure out how I can help this dude because it's not just physical. I think a lot of the root when it comes to stuff like this is, is a, uh, and when I say a mental issue, I, I don't, I, I mean, it's just something that you're not clicking with mentally that gets you excited to go prepare for your craft, that gets you excited to go compete and, and just get better, right? There's something that is deterring you from that, from putting you in the best possible position to create your best self as an athlete. And when there are those hurdles in front of you, sometimes they can feel like they're 10 feet tall and you just, you you have no chance of clearing them. So let's talk about it, man. Like, you know, what do you got? Like, was it, was it the conversation about you not being able to physically perform that kind of ruffled your feathers early and then production wasn't great early and and now like just kind of a snowball effect is that what we got and if so but hey let's work through this you know that because that kind of shit happens to people you'll have a down year this is a year you get your ass kicked you feel great you get your ass kicked it's gonna happen also like just one final thing that kind of just occurred to me and i know this is a long way in the rearview mirror at this point conversationally but it impacts everybody differently right and when we were talking about the pitch clock at the beginning of the year, there was the list of guys who had the slowest tempo over 2021 and 2022 and how that might impact those people. And given that it's been from the jump with Alec Manoa this year, basically like he was the fifth slowest guy in 2022 in terms of average tempo. And the top of that list does not look great if you're looking for uh, evidence that it's impacting high level pitching, but what's the list? So uh, Otani was the slowest. Uh, Luis Garcia was two. Um, obviously, he's missing the year for because of elbow injuries. Corbin Burns three, not the same guy. You Darvish four. I'm sure we'll get to him in news and notes. Done for the season. Wasn't the same guy. Manoa, Giolito, Jordan Montgomery, who's been fine. Gosman, who's been fine. Verlander, who has gotten there but was off to the mm. slow start. Aaron Nola ten hasn't been the same guy. Julio Arias. Lots of stuff going on there. Wasn't the same pitcher when he was on the field. So that's the top 11. That's yeah, not great. Know, I, yeah, I was going to say, out of no. all those names, uh, Gosman might be the only one that's having a typical season for what we're used yeah. to. And I would have thrown Otani in that mix too, but like, we're not drawing co- conclusions elbow, off of the elbow off. injury. But like, listen, he was he ended up not producing the season that we thought he was going to, um, pitching-wise. So, I mean, that's a brutal fucking list. Do you blame the pitch clock, Dallas? Um, no, I, I think I think you can. It can absolutely play a factor, but I, I mean, no, I can't blame the pitch clock. Like I said, I think there are just some other things at play here 
that need to be attended to before you can just put it all on the pitch clock because that would assume that you know like like for me the uh, I knowing the injury part of this situation for me that almost takes care of it for me and, like that that lets me know why it is what it is right now and I want to be clear I'm not I'm not assigning the blame to the pitch clock but if it's a pie chart right you've got you got injuries you got the fact that his performance was down in a lot of ways from 21 to 22 already. There were some red flags happening, uh, mm -hmm. maybe conditioning issues, maybe pitch clock. Like maybe all of those things are forming into a disaster season for Manoa that ends up in this situation. Um, that's all. Yeah, mm -hmm. because w what would you like to think is on the other side of this? A Maybe a, a, a better conditioned player? who is now in a place mentally to not only prepare himself like he has in the past, maybe, and maybe now with a little more attention to some other areas that he felt like he was going to be able to not pay attention to. And having done that kind of rewards him mentally for addressing things and getting better. And now you got a completely different Alec Manoa in 2024. I think that's, what you could hope for. That's what you would want to see. It's a, it's a shitty story. Cause I'm an, I'm an Alec Manoa fan. Um, love watching him pitch. I, I know like some of the, some of the things that piss off other fans are the things I like about him. Um, it happened against my team. So I know that a lot of Red Sox fans don't like Alec Manoa. And it, you know, speaking as someone who, liked like he did it to Bobby Dahlbeck who's like one of my really good friends and I still was just like I I like Alec he was barking off the mound telling him like you know sit the fuck down bitch like he's saying that to Bobby Dahlbeck's one of the nicest guys in the world like he didn't instigate anything but I think more so just I think it's that uncontrollable um competitive force that he has like that that's one of those things that I enjoy about uh Manoa but I think it's one of those things that it's not universally loved by baseball fans like I think is Marcus Stroman is another example of that where he's you know showing up other I think it's those two dudes are saying if hitters can do it why can't we as pitchers they're they're two examples of guys that just uh they they break the tradition of what how a pitcher is supposed to act and I like that I like when guys talk shit it means you care you know, I, like I mean, I, I liked Manoa when we saw him on the fucking, we saw him on the red carpet. He just like, he got to the end and he was like, all right, whole squad on the carpet, taking yeah. pictures. Let's roll. Like, just, like, just yeah. you know, enjoying the moment, like doing his thing in the context of having earned that opportunity to be with his family, to be with the fans. You're on the red carpet. And he was like, yeah, man, I'm not going to stop here. Come on. Come on the other side of this velvet rope. Let's fucking live it up. I, I right. And that's why I said I would want to be investing in this dude and making sure that where he is at mentally is the place that, that allows him to get back to competing the way that he can, because it's just all about channeling the passion you're talking about, Jared, because I know what it's like to have misguided anger. And I know what it's like oh, to be upset sure. really at yourself more so and really at the situation more so than anything else. And so sometimes yeah, we you have a, to be talked off off that ledge. What'd you say? <laughs> I said, yeah, we saw the Gatorade cups. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> Fair. What would you put the percentage chances that Alec Manoa pitches another game for the Toronto Blue Jays? Well, shit, what is, I'm going to say 100%. 100%? 100%. He's There's back. no fucking way it's 100%. There's got to be nope. a chance that he's burned a bridge. Yeah, I don't, I'm not saying that it's I'm not saying it should be lower than 50 percent, but 100 percent is crazy. I mean, what? yeah, like he's he's under. Yes, 100 percent. Jesus, Joseph, what do you got? I was going to say coin flip, but now I got 100 percent. That swayed me. I'm say 67 percent. Jay, hey. I'll go 75, 25. How much? Decidedly more likely to pitch for the Blue 85. Than not. 85%. I said 70. What? I said 75, 25. Okay. 75%. Yeah, yeah. Um, because look, like he's, look, he's, 
<laughs> he's not even arbitration eligible for like two more years. So sure. the controllability, like that's why, again, I go back to the word invest in this dude. You've seen what he's capable of. So to think that you can't or to just give up on yourself as an organization to think that you can't get that back, I would hate to think that they're already there. But yeah, I think again, that's a good point. Like the, he's got options. You've got that going for you and you have several years of control. So if they I, I guess it, the question would more be like, what are the odds that he uh, makes it to free agency as a Blue Jay? Well, yeah, because, Jared, what you're saying is the guy that you picked to win the Cy Young. Guy, guy that you guy that you picked to win the Cy Young is already disposable. Hey, do we have in, that information in your world? It's not important. Did you find it? It's, it, it's yeah, not it just important. came in. Yeah, what is it? Uh, who who did Dallas I don't know pick? And who it, did I pick? Doesn't matter to the conversation. Well, if you want to know, Dallas, you took Alec Manoa. Oh, yeah. he so, did. So no, that, no. Look, that was um, I was. I think I was Dallas rushed took into the Alec pick. Manoa. Did I take Alec mm. Manoa? Or did I take Kevin Gosman? You took Alec Manoa. Manoa. I took yeah. Manoa. Okay. All right. And I stand by that. <laughs> you still I stand chance? by that. You still think yeah. he has a chance? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Because I yeah. knew that we'll, me we'll, and Dallas both had Spencer Strider, correct? We'll go. Yes. We'll go cash in together. We'll go cash our AL Cy Young ticket together. Okay. I think you <laughs> yeah. lose the Strider win for Manoa. I think those two cancel each other out. It's so, <laughs> one of those is so bad. It's like. It's like your pick was so bad. He was literally demoted and the situation got so toxic. He refused to report. Like imagine talking about that in March. Well, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, Dallas hurt. both had Trey That's Turner what... for NL MVP and he that salvaged for... his season though. He did. Shout out to the Phillies fans. Phillies fans salvaged his season and the baseball right. gods salvaged his season. Like if you look at Trey Turner's numbers right now, it's overall for the trade. whole season. Just for having one good month, he's almost at an 800 OPS. <laughs> he's got he's look- got 26 homers, 31 doubles, 75 RBI. Uh, he's hitting 272, the on base, whatever. It's 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 below his career. His career OBP is 350. He's at 323, but the slug is at 475. His career is 485, and his OPS is 799. I mean, it's a mildly disappointing season overall i wouldn't even say it's mild uh, yeah like i would uh, say i mean it is definitely relative to his career it just if he continues uh, which again who knows uh, how many weeks are left three or four if he finishes out the season at the rate that he's been hitting over the last month well then his numbers will look a lot better his numbers will probably be right around if not above his career they were last year I, I'm not. I, I'm more concerned about like what di, what were the expectations when he signed a three hundred million dollar contract, and I think the baseline was let's repeat the previous season, so 2022. And you're right. If he continues at his current, he already pace, has he, more home runs this year than he did last year, and he has eight fewer doubles. Yeah, I mean his OPS is and OPS plus are lower than they were last year, and he's and his WAR is like two and a half runs regardless of what source you use or one and one and a half to two and a half. So like, I'm not saying that it's a, it's a vast difference from what he produced last year, but I mean, I think that's, that was the baseline. That's why we play 162. And we're, that's why you play 162. Yeah. I mean, my original point stands, he has salvaged his season. He's like a three to four win player this year, which at $30 million a year. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Trey Turner earned his money for this season. Yeah. And his and like I said, he still has roughly what three and a half weeks yes. left to continue yes. at this rate. I think when when we look at the numbers at the end of the season, uh, let's just say, you know, how like Jay Hay is going back in the offseason, he's looking at MVP races, and we're just we're only gonna have overall numbers because we don't rem- remember the 1954 American League MVP race. But we're gonna look back on Trey Turner's 2023 season with the Phillies and be like, that's a pretty good year when really it was just an extremely strong finish. Uh, You know, it's an interesting question off of that point is who has been the most valuable Phillies offensive player this year? Because it might be Trey Turner. (laughs) That's kind of crazy. It honestly might be like on a maybe it's uh, it's Bryce like on a per plate appearance basis. Yeah, 
But Turner's got 150 more plate appearances than he does this year. And he plays shortstop, whereas Bryce spent most of the year DHing. I mean, it's just like, and then you've got the Schwarber thing where he's got 43 homers and a 348 on base percentage, but like. And he's hitting 100. Yeah, as as he's probably produced as little value out of 43 homers as you can possibly do in the modern game. Uh, (laughs) You know, Real Muto does his thing every year, like solid three to four win catcher. Like it's just. No one talks about him. No, nobody does. But that, but that's why the question is kind of like an not interesting necessarily, but just kind of weird that after the way we talked about and like watched Trey Turner play, he might be their best player by the end of the year. Hey, dude, there's a reason why he's our NL MVP pick. To your to your uh, stat that you put out on Twitter at the beginning of the yep. podcast about his ranks and whatever, mm-hmm. I went ahead and looked. So he's produced three point eight F four this season. Yeah. 3.1 of those have come in the last 33 games. So your sample and 0.7 occurred in the first 108 games this season. So it literally is the entire season of value in the last month or five weeks. Yeah. It's crazy. Damn. I think it's going to be funny when other fan bases try the standing ovation and it just doesn't work and they look stupid for it. <laughs> it's going to be very funny. Um, if you want to get out to a Phillies game and give a standing ovation to Trey Turner so that he finishes the season strong, you need to check out the game time app to get those tickets. Because, we, I mean, we went to the uh, the the bank. They were sold out crowds. You don't want to miss this finish to the Philadelphia Phillies season. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hype for all the fun that you will have. Uh, I when is the next? Oh, you know what? They just announced the Royal Rumble is going to be at Tropicana Field. A little Tampa, WWE MLB crossover. Uh, me and Bob Fox have uh, made a pact that uh, I said, listen, you know, I don't work at Barstool anymore. Uh I, he's one of my best friends. I was like, I feel like we need to make an effort to see each other. We're never, we're never going to see each other again. So we are going to go to every, that's going to be our thing. Every off season, we're going to go to the Royal Rumble together. And the first one, uh, since our Royal Rumble pact is at Tropicana field in Tampa. So I, that's, I'm going to be using the game time app to go get tickets for that. Me and Bob Fox down in Tampa, living it up in January. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section in a row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to get before you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you are set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. Mm-hmm. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code Jared J A R E D for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the promo code Jared for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Um, I have a question for you guys, and I I already have an answer, but maybe there's another answer that comes to mind. So. There's an MVP race that everyone's talking about that's happening right now in the National Mm -hmm. League. And we all know what Ronald Acuna Jr. is doing. He is probably going to end up with 40 home runs and 70 stolen bases. Um, And then you have Marcus Lynn Betts doing what he's doing. Uh, He already has accumulated eight wins above replacement. So you've got what appears to be a two guy race, but then you scale it back a little bit and maybe there are some other contenders in the national league MVP race. And they just so happen to be teammates of the front runners. Matt Olson just tied the Atlanta Braves franchise record with his 51st home run of the season. Uh, Platinum glove first baseman. (laughs) (laughs) This is one of the works. Yeah, platinum glove you, you got <laughs> defense got at got first Mandela. base. And, and yeah, that really is the Mandela effect for sure. Uh, but the one thing that I wanted to point out that was interesting to me, because Freddie Freeman, Freddie Freeman had himself uh, a day. I don't know if you're watching any Dodger baseball, but Freddie Freeman 
Four hits and four bats. Homer drove in two, scored four runs. And after that game, he has leapfrogged Ronald Acuna Jr. in F4. It is Mookie <laughs> Betts with eight. It is Freddie Freeman at 7.2. And it is Ronald Acuna Jr. at 7.1. And am I saying, Joe, that Freddie Freeman is more valuable than Ronald Acuna Jr.? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But Fair what I am the stats saying... Are. The stats are saying that, well, though, and you're repeating well, the stats. F, F, F war is not the end all be all. I'm I'm pretty uh, firm in my position on that. I don't think that F war should be the end all be all. I think it carries a lot of weight, which is why we need to do what I said. Create this statistic that you weight statistics differently in terms of their importance and impact on the game. But I, I'm just trying to give Freddie some love. Not saying he's I, the MVP. I am saying that he is having a season that I feel like is being overlooked because we're all blowing Ronnie and Mookie Betts is having the season that he's having on the same team as Freddie Freeman. But like I, I can remember a time when Freddie Freeman was a free agent and he was asking for the money that he was asking for. And the conversation was, well, he's going to be in his mid to late thirties over this deal. Like you're base, you're signing the name. You're not even signing the player. You're not going to get the Braves got the best years, got the best Freddie Freeman years. And that just has not been the case. He is having a conversation. It's not even just the national league MVP picture. Freddie Freeman, you could say is a, is a top three player in major league baseball right now. Well, let's hold up and not forget that he won an MVP with the Braves. It's to say that the Dodgers got the better Freddie Freeman. I think it's a little early to say that. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, I mean, the fact that he is still, uh, how old is he? 33. 33. 33 and still a top three player in Major League Baseball statistically. Pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I think to your point about the where they stand, him and Acuna and F4, I don't, to me, the takeaway isn't, that one guy is necessarily better than the other. Because if you look at B-War, it tells a similar story. And the story is that Freddie Freeman has been nearly as valuable or as valuable as these guys that we've spent the whole season talking about. Like that, I think you're right that it's it's a shine a light on Freeman's situation because like, yes, technically his best statistical season is 2020 and it'll never be surpassed because of the sample size. But like what he's done the last two years with the Dodgers has been as good as any other season that Freddie Freeman contributed in what we thought was the prime of his career. Like this is the prime has extended so much further than I think most people thought that it would. He's exactly as good, if not better than he was when he was 26, 27, 28 years old. And that's the point that at 33 and his age, his game is aging gracefully in lots of different ways too, because (laughs) like, no, he, He's not. He, he had 38 homers in 2019. He's got 26 this year. Okay, he's got 55 fucking doubles this year. Like he's yeah. he's adjusting well, to the he'll, park he'll, that yeah. he plays in. And didn't he break right? the Dodgers single season record for doubles like at the end of August? Yeah, and yes. like he's got 18 steals. Which that's what I was going to okay, say. That's, yeah, it's not eye popping, but that's Broke his career high. Been caught once. Yeah, 18 and 1 and it's and it's it's his career high and his two highest career totals have come in the last two seasons with the Dodgers. So, it whether you want to well, shout out Ben Verlander, whether you want to sh- uh, cite base <laughs> runs on fan graphs or not, like you don't need that to make the point that Freddie Freeman has become a really really good base runner and probably a better base runner at 33 than he was at 25, 26, which speaks to his intelligence and his maturity within the game. You could also look at base runs on fan graphs and say, hey, that makes a lot of sense because we watch Freddie Freeman and we see how he goes first to third. We see how he takes the steals that are available to him and doesn't take the ones that aren't. And that's just a stat that factors that in. Doesn't know what they're talking about. Fuck off. I I think you could look at these first two years for Freddie Freeman as a Dodger and where the Dodgers have ended up I think may have impacted overall what I'm about to say, but is it safe to say that if the Dodgers would have won a world series within one of these first two years of Freddie Freeman being here, that it's a done deal. Like the, the contract well worth it earned oh, every I, bit of it. Oh, it already is. I, I think without a championship, it already is, but that, yeah, I, that's always two years, been two years into a six year deal. That's my point is two well, years because into this six year deal. You're all, you have already yes. probably gotten what you were looking for, for Freddie Freeman. And yes. you've gotten it in the first two years. 
Right. Because think of it in the context of being an MLB executive, knowing that <laughs> clearly his preference is slash was to stay in Atlanta. Dude fucking cried about it for like the first six weeks, even after signing with the Dodgers. He, you're going to have to uh, extend yourself a little bit in order to pry the player away from where he wants to be. And in this particular case, the Dodgers made a great offer to Freddie. You got the player. And when you're looking at signing a player that's already past 30 at the at day one of the contract, you're already on the other side of 30. You're looking at those first three, four years. If you sign them for six, you're hoping to get elite seasons out of the first three. And then you're rolling the dice, hoping maybe maybe he ages gracefully for those last three, last two seasons. That's what you're hoping. So right now, two years in, you're getting a top three player in Major League Baseball. So to me, already worth it. I, and listen, I know, I know the 30, 60 thing sexy. And I know the maybe the 40, 60 thing is sexy if he gets there. 40, 70. Are, 40, or 40, 50, 70. 70. Those are all... I don't think 50, 70 is going to happen. 50, but, those are, but those are all very F- sexy, easy. but they're really just a combination of two numbers, right? Freddie Freeman, if we want to play that game, has a very real shot at becoming the first player in Freddie Major Freeman's League Baseball a history. Right. 25 homers, 60 doubles, and 20 steals. That's never been done ever in baseball history. Freddie Freeman is five, 25, 25 homers, homers, which he's already hit. 60 doubles and 20 steals. So he needs five doubles. And two steals over the remainder of the season. Seems pretty mm. doable if he wants to. Never He'd been be the done. first person ever. Never been done. Hmm. Bonds never did that? Never did that. That seems like I a don't Bonds. Think Bonds well, hit, I don't think Bonds in, had 60 almost. doubles in any season. I'm not even sure. Well, Barry you know had what's, had now, 50 now that you season. brought up Barry, uh, Freddie Freeman also, um, I just pulled this up just because I... Can you guys, uh, if you're if you're looking at Freddie Freeman's baseball reference page, uh, stop. Oh. And how many intentional walks do you think Freddie Freeman has right now? This year? <laughs> yeah, because he leads the league. He leads the league in, in intentional walks. Seven? Yeah, I'd say ten. Joe, what do you got? Mm, Twelve. <laughs> you fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you're such a loser. Why? For getting yes. it right? Nah, I wasn't even fucking looking at it, so I got it right. So I'm a loser for getting yeah. it right. You want me to believe that? You want, I'm, I, this is over there I, clicking absolutely. away. Click, clack. I'm <laughs> on. I'm literally looking up something else, bro. I'm okay. looking up yeah. who leads the I, league I in doubles, dude. And yeah. I didn't know what the fuck. I didn't look at it. And if you want to take credit for <coughs> take credit away from me, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Yeah, that's the wrong answer. I got it right. 12 Maybe is I the just... correct answer, but you're a liar and a whore, Joseph. <laughs> Maybe that I just is... know more about Freddie Freeman than you, and you don't want to admit it. <laughs> I know more about Freddie Freeman than all you guys combined, so. Yeah. It's probably true. Maybe. Yeah. Just, hey, just 232-120. Never forget. Never right? forget. That Never is, uh, that is kind of crazy that uh, it's that close, because for a while, <laughs> it was Ronnie and no one else. Then Mookie Betts popped up into the equation. And Freddie, Freddie should very much be in this conversation. I don't really see that. I don't like I, I don't see people saying, well, you know, Ronnie's got it wrapped up. Like no one is sitting there saying, well, f- what about Freddie? Freddie Freeman's having a fucking outstanding year, too. It's because it's everybody's it. caught up in the in the stolen bases. You know, the 30, yes. Who the, fuck uh-huh. win, who the fuck wins MVP? I, I, again, I'm not arguing against Acuna. I still think that he should win. But it really is because of the stolen bases. And I think that there are going to be. Hey, Jared, what? Jared, listen, though. Listen, listen. This is what I have been clamoring for as far as a player goes who likes and, and a fan goes who likes to see the excitement of baseball played out, stolen bases, hitting and running, right? Like, I, I like to see that brand of baseball. And I've been, I've been telling you that how do we see that brand of baseball become prevalent? How do we see this brand of baseball become by rewarding what it? We're watching yeah, by rewarding it. So what yeah. happens when you hand Ronald Acuna Jr. the MVP because he's put together a combined power and speed season that we haven't seen in quite a while? Well, now you start to get other guys and I think other people start to pay attention to what's being rewarded 
And now you just might be at the forefront of the shift in the approach at the plate. And I say at the plate, but I mean offensively. We're willing to roll the dice a little more and use some of our guys to try to steal bases in the face of mm. the, you know, the the earned run uh, expectancy chart. And maybe we're maybe we're so more willing to move a guy up is, so he could steal third. This, like, is, I don't a, this know. is an Uncle Manfred uh, big brother manipulation initiative to where he will influence the voters to vote for Ronald Acuna Jr. for MVP so that the stolen base becomes more valuable so that he gets more praise because he's the one that came up with the bigger bases. And That's Jared, let's is. not let's not forget who we're talking to too when it comes to Manfred. Right. He's one of the he's <laughs> one of them. Might, might as well be Rob giving an interview on the pod right he's now. He's literally oh. wearing Rob Manfred boxer shorts right now. You can't see them because they're out of frame. <laughs> I Personally, I think we should give the award to Freddie Freeman because he's also putting together a power speed season that we haven't seen in a while. See how easy that is to do. Yeah. Ronald Acuna yeah. is 21st in Major League Baseball. In He also leads baseball in caught stealing. So like I, I, the 65 steals are sexy, but like I think we also need to account for the fact that he's getting caught more than anybody else in the game, too. And mm. yeah. 21st Absolute. in in success but, but, rate, but Jay, which is... But Jay, th- go. I, I, listen, I picked him for MVP. That. They can I'm, afford I, that. They can afford that. They can afford, like, I think specifically they can afford to let a guy like Ronald Acuna Jr. run wild because Ronnie's not going to run. Of a, that run is a us separate conversation from whether he is the most valuable player or whether we should be rewarding him for those stolen bases and caught mm. stealings. You're saying the Braves can afford it. Maybe they can. Well, maybe he, they he, can't. He benefits that has from nothing being able to, to do, do that. That has nothing to do with his value relative to Freddie Freeman or Mookie Betts, though. Well, I think, because, we're, I think we're kind of we're, we're, we're ducking the question here. Jay, hey, the season Dodgers ends, can afford it too. season ends steal. there. We obviously know Joey's going to go Acuna because he's a Braves honk. Dallas is going to go Acuna because he's being paid off by Rob Manfred. If the season ends today, everyone's going with Acuna, dude. Who are you voting for for National League MVP today? Everybody's saying the same shit. Uh, I think I would go with Mookie at this point, to be honest. Oh, Mookie! Um, After all yeah. the Ronnie versus Freddie talk, That's Jay Hay goes Mookie. Well, today I, I was trying to, I was with you on shining a light on Freddie, but I thought yeah. that was with the understanding that like Mook, Mookie's light had well, been shined and you made we're the most the va- You made the most valid point of all is that, fi- what is it? Uh, 50 doubles, 20 stolen bases, and what? Yeah, 20, 20 steals, homers. 25 homers, 60, 60, 60 doubles. 60 doubles, yeah. Never been done. I, why is that not as cool as I, forty seventy? I think that it. I think that it is. I, um, I think it is as well. Yeah, I just. So you have a in terms of value. Third, I think it's as cool. Third in MVP. So so let me no, ask you this though, I, Jay. I, listen, I still out think of the, out I'm of the stolen say this, bases that Freddie Freeman has logged. How yeah. many of them are of importance? How many of them are game changing? I'm not saying that Ronald Acuna. Every one of him. Every one of his bags are game changing. But is there anything to Freddie stealing a bag in an opportunity where it might not mean much? So he's got 20. I don't have any evidence in front of me that he, that he's just taking free bags. If if half of his stolen bases are charity bags, then that's fine. But I don't think that would be reflected in a stat like base runs either. Um, like I would assume that uh, that he's just taking advantage when he can as opposed to just taking free bases. Well, but that I would think, be an interesting question to you for either me or a listener to look into before the next podcast. Uh, I'm sure there, I'm sure you can get video of Freeman's 18 stolen bases and the context around them. Um, my whole thing is I, think- I, I haven't in my entire baseball fandom, I haven't been a huge like I like the stolen base. I think it's exciting. I think it's like, I see the value in it because you're putting yourself in scoring position, but Ronald Acuna Jr. It, has stolen 47 more bases than Freddie Freeman, but he's only scored 11 more runs than him. Mm-hmm. Like hmm. that, that's why to me it doesn't like when you, everyone's like, oh, but the stolen bases. I'm like, the whole point of the stolen base is to get into scoring positions so that you can score a run. So if he's stolen 47 more bases, but only scored 11 more runs, how valuable can that be? Well, think and about it. if he didn't sc- fucking steal 60 bases, he would have <laughs> st- scored up 50 runs less. And then that then you can see how mu- important stolen bases are. And what the if you look at that, does, it, what does it do? Go, Joe. Oh, well, well, it opens up. <laughs> it, it, it can open it can open things up, right? It, it's not just about 
So like to the to the end game of scoring runs, that's what you want to do. But in the game, in that moment, it can open things up for you. That's why we, you know, trying to open a hole by starting a runner. And now somebody's got to vacate their defensive position. So the stolen base in in my mind is more than just moving up 90 feet. Ultimately, it is in an effort to score a run, but there are things that happen and things that change when a stolen base occurs. When you steal third base, less than two outs, that pitcher, or even with two outs, that pitcher now, if they're going to bury a two-strike breaking ball or a two-strike put-away pitch, if that gets out of the circle, especially with the way that defensive players align themselves with a third baseman maybe trying to fill more of the hole, that base runner is down the line quite a bit. So when that ball kicks with two strikes, he's gone. He's, he's, he's coming home. And now you don't want to bury the pitch with two strikes because you've got a guy on third base. Now you leave it hanging. Whack. Now it's a double in the gap. Matt Olson, 51 Cause the, home runs. Because the guy stole fucking third. Like I wouldn't, I, I would have had no problem burying it. Okay, yeah, so he was all right, on third. All right, all right. Let me let me ask you guys this: Freddie Freeman, Ronald Acuna Jr., Mookie Betts, rank them one through three as of today. Joe, wow. um, I would I would put um, Ronald Acuna first, just because if you look at all their offensive categories, they're pretty pretty similar. In terms of slugging, average, on base percentage, even runs, all this is pretty similar. The big thing is steals, which is so much more. And if you're going to say we're going to give it because the steals kind of are, but then I'd probably put Mookie just because he plays better defense than Freddie and he hits more bombs. But offensively, in terms of the big three categories that everyone follows and just how much runs are you producing, power and whatever, they're pretty, pretty similar. What's the way to run created plus for those three guys? Uh, 173, Mookie, and 167, 168. 168. So Freddie yeah. and Acuna are basically a wash. And then, yeah, didn't yeah. you say Mookie, Mookie's leading the pack in B War, right? No, F War. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I haven't looked at B War, but B- F War is both. what we're going to go with here. Yeah, yeah. Mookie is. Yeah, eight. I, I thought last time I looked, Mookie was almost like a fucking full win. He's almost a full win guys. better than Ronnie. So it goes Mookie eight. Freddie, 7.2. Ronnie, 7.1. The weighted runs created plus, 173 for Mookie, 167 for Freddie, 168 for Ronnie. Um, and then, like, if you're just looking at, you know, your traditional, like, batting average, 339 Freddie, 333 Ronnie, 311 Mookie. On base is a wash, 416 Freddie, 415 Ronnie, 311 Mookie. It's crazy how similar their triple slash numbers are. Yeah, it's all, it's all the same. Everything. It's all the same. It's yeah. There's nothing that stands out to Joe's point. Like the one thing that one of these guys is demonstrably better at than everyone else is stolen bases. Yeah, and what was the last time an MVP led the league in steals? Well, but again, again, like as as much as as he is a nerd, he's our nerd. And Jay Hayes' point about the amount of stolen bases and the amount of times caught. You could almost argue that it's not necessarily better. He's just done it so many more times that the numbers are what they are. And, 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 and I'm appreciative of the idea that he is. A, there are instances where people are seeing more fastballs because uh, Acuna is on first or because Acuna is on base than they would otherwise. I, that's the numbers suggest that that's not comprehensive throughout everybody that hits around him, but it does appear to exist for some of the people. But but my but what I want to say about that too is that I, I do feel a little guilty getting into that type of stuff because it almost feels like we're just trying to justify the pick that we've spent 80% of the season. Like the the arguments in favor of Acuna have gotten very <laughs> very specific Detailed. lately. Um uh-huh. yeah they it used to be oh yeah Ronnie's gonna run away with it and then as the season comes along it's like well, you know, you know, if you really dig into it, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, he comes another. And so it's like, I what don't do you know, mean, if I had dude, to order- you, you have to dig in to say why the stolen bases aren't 
or if as much the as caught stealings is not digging in it's just one of the stats on baseball reference it's one of the italics no stats. but to <laughs> see someone get 60 steals and be like well actually that's kind of not that as good as it sounds even though it's more steals than anyone's had in like 20 years I, to, to, to say that's a dig. that we can acknowledge stolen bases and then just pretend the caught stealings don't exist is just it's just disingenuous it's not having a real conversation about his stolen bases then it's just saying, well, he's stealing a lot, so I don't fucking care how many times he's gotten yeah. caught because well, I'm, I'm reaching well, the conclusion the that I wanted to reach about in the, the first digs. place. I'm um, who's digging into the Ronnie stuff and have to justify Ronnie's MVP. What are you digging into deep? It's obvious right there in front of you. Sixty steals. Wow. Well, no one's at ever this done point, ever. he's not really leading in anything <laughs> other than stolen bases. So you it's do not have shit. to do much digging to to come up with an argument why Ronald Acuna is not the MVP. To answer the question, I would go Mookie. Acuna Freeman right now. Um, but I'm also convinced that this is one of the rare MVP races that really does require like the full boat of games before mm -hmm. before we can make our official decision. And I'm I'm also going to make a promise mostly to myself right now, but also to you guys, that I refuse to allow this to be an MVP race where I get mad about an outcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so it's silly. I like hey, if Ronald hey, if Ronald I got Acuna, you already already I got you getting pissed off about it. <laughs> no, no, yeah. if Ronald Acuna yep. wins, I, th that's great in a lot of different ways. Okay, it, and I think it, he would be it, deserving. I don't care about it? like I just think we it's not often do we spend as much time as we did on an award where the the conclusion was <laughs> foregone, where we have to then completely backtrack. And actually have a conversation about the award. Like I don't remember the last time this happened. I I can't wait to see those caught stealings just be completely rendered fucking useless. Just a moot point, and watch you fucking spaz out about it. I mean, Mookie he's been caught stealing more than Ronnie has. Who's that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mookie. No, he hasn't. Stolen base percentage: seventy-eight point six percent for Mookie, eighty-three point three percent for Ronnie, ninety-four point seven percent for Freeman. Yep. Yeah, he's got um, Mookie's got three caught stealings. That's not yeah. more caught. It's 13 to three. Mookie steals a lot less. I'm yeah, not saying, saying that I'm, Mookie, saying like the, I'm the not saying that Mookie the Betts runners have been safe. I'm not saying that Mookie Betts is adding more value via the base pass than, than Ronald Acuna. I've never said that. I'm what about, saying yeah, that. What about the idea? Here's some here's a big brain thought. What about the idea that the guys who steal less are remaining on base more because Ooh, interesting. Ronnie is removing yeah. himself from the base paths more often than the other no, two guys? No, well, I'll rebuttal that easily, bro. He's getting out of double play, double double play situations. But that's well. But then to, if he's getting but, thrown out, then it doesn't matter. I, but but he's both never, of those he, points, he's usually not. He's usually not. He's usually safe, guys. He's, <laughs> he's usually, usually fucking safe. He's safe so much more than he's out. Oh, that's true. But to those points, that's why you have to hit a certain threshold of success on the base paths in order for it to be worth it. Right? Which he said. Because which he said, right? Which, which he is, is hitting. Is, yes, no is doubt. 60 is 60 bags worth it? <laughs> Nobody is saying that Acuña is not a net positive. We just to reduce the MVP to the fact that he has the most stolen bases and pretend that he doesn't also have the most caught stealings and a good not great success rate. I'm not here for that. Not doing it. Dallas, what's your what's your power rankings right now? One through three. Um, one through three. It probably it, it is probably Ronnie Mookie Freddie. That was why you just you, ripped through it quick because he it was like he just wants to get it over with. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I think is an interesting sub question though. <laughs> Is uh, how close uh, does Matt Olson get to Freeman for third? Because I really, I do think with all due, the, the we pay respect to Fre we. What'd you say? <laughs> this is Dallas. Mookie running Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> how? Because I think the first two are are going to be Ronnie and Mookie in some order. Yeah. I, with all, I don't think Freeman is going to overcome the sex appeal thing well, with he better, he better get running jay hey, fuck tell you that <laughs> better well, or not though or not though right see right. that's the give and take i'm wondering well, how much if olsen climbs up the home run chart and ends up with like 30 more homers than freddie mm. i wonder Could how close 50, that third and fourth foes gets only goes 50 20 he's in the combo yeah 19 more steals let's go <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's got the platinum glove to fall back on, which I'm sure has already been printed for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that one's easy. Everyone knows that. Uh, you fucking idiot. 
platinum club caliber first baseman. You're going to tell me that he's below average. Fuck you. <laughs> I know. Seeing Jared in that light was, was something else. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dallas just like leads me to slaughter. That's all he does. <laughs> <laughs> he, he never puts me in a position to succeed. <laughs> it's because even when he's wrong, he just fucking has so much conviction in his voice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's Matty O, baby. Platinum glove up, kid. <laughs> brother. <laughs> you got platinum gloves on both sides of the infield, brother. Uh, it was so true. It was so true. Never was. Never was a thing. No, no. <laughs> Never happened. Oh, nope. <laughs> no. Um, all right. right. We're in the heat of the summer and you need a pair of great shades. You don't have to baby knock around sunglasses is the go to for quality polarized shades that won't break the bank. Plus, they just released their first set of official MLB collection, including the Red Sox and the Yankees. Don't be the person that's squinting into the sun or worried about getting sand on their overpriced sunglasses. Check out knockaround.com for great looking polarized shades starting at just 28 bucks. Use the promo code ROCKET and that'll get you free shipping on your order. Uh, were there any other stories that I feel like we missed today? I mean, I have a, I have a final note or two, but not like a story. Not like a headline story. Dallas, Joseph, no. Joseph's um, peeing. This dude pees more than yeah, a I fucking do. Just pregnant a person. Go ahead. Uh, thoughts on one Alex Rodriguez's comments on batting average. Well, I didn't hear what he oh, said. God, what did, is what did it say? Did I'm, you see I a video clip? Predict did you see a video clip or was it a, a text? It's a video clip. Where can I find it? Uh, probably on Twitter. Thanks. Uh, do you have a specific account of the billions that exist? Okay, all right. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, fuck, all right, right, I got, I got, I got it right here. Yeah, see. Play it. I, I completely agree with this. First of all, numbers don't lie. Uh, the best batting average in baseball right now is the best team, the Atlanta Braves. The worst average is the Oakland A's. So, of wow. course, there's a correlation. Batting average matters. It did 100 years ago, <laughs> 50 years ago, and it does today. I agree with him, yo. <laughs> it's sad. I, it's sad I he agree won't give with up. The, he won't let it go. The Dallas Braden beef. He won't let it go. He's still he won't see, won't I try to let this shit go, Joe. Yeah. I try to let it die. I and know. the fucking guy just continues to fire arrows. That, that, it did I, seem a little personal. My favorite thing about A-Rod is that it feels like he's not having a conversation with anyone really. Like, <laughs> who is arguing about <laughs> his point here? Nobody I, is saying I think it might that be. a 999 batting average is not better than a zero batting average, right? Like we're all on the same page <laughs> that in order to win baseball games, you need to like get hits sometimes, right? But like, I bet if you ran the same numbers that he just ran for on base percentage, you're probably going to find something similar. And he's, it's, it's just so silly that he's fighting a war that's just fucking over. It's just over. <laughs> And and well, his I, whole I career, he, he every comment wait, he makes, what is the is war? In that, that batting conflict. average doesn't matter. No, no, no. I'm saying like there was that time where like it, at the like kind of rise of sabermetrics, where one of their key key points initially was that on base percentage is a more important stat to consider than batting average. And I know that's like ridiculously like basic for this pod and everybody's listeners. But that was the fight 20 years ago publicly. OK, and so like everybody's on the same page that batting average is a component of getting on base. So on base percentage is by nature more important. It's just correlates with runs scored more than batting average. And it's just like he's having a 2004 conversation in 2023 and nobody else is participating in it. <laughs> Everything about his I commentary is in direct contrast to how he played baseball in his career. He always talks about the bunting and he always talks about batting average. And then you go and look at A-Rod's career and you're like, this wasn't what you were about at all. This is not what made you great. This is not what made you one of the greatest prospects and players in Major League Baseball history. And yet you can't stop fucking talking about it. It's just he's so weird. I think the fact that he's also using a sean connery voice to do it in is what really gets me excited about it 
when I was when I tell you, it's batting average. It was a hundred years ago. It mattered, and six hundred years ago, it's going to matter. And it matters today in these years as well. So, like that, that <laughs> all context aside of a statement, I couldn't fucking quit laughing at that. Um, but I do appreciate his willingness to, to continue. To bring this conversation to the forefront. I'm I'm here for it, Jay. I'm here for it. You gotta get hits. You gotta get hits. <laughs> Every thought of hits. You want me to like, get on you, base, Jay? Hey, how do I get on, on base? I gotta hit the ball. You know what I was considering earlier? You gotta get hits. Batting <laughs> average, it's important. Like that's how he call, calls games. It's so ridiculous. It's, it's some of the most important numbers to take a look at, Jay. Hey, and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> in this year, <laughs> you've simply got to be able to put the bat on the ball. In this year's, last year, years ahead, you're going to have to put the bat on the ball. The hits are going to be a premium, J.A., for years to come. Years. <laughs> what a fucking dickhead. You guys just need to get into a boxing ring. <laughs> <laughs> me and Dallas? No, A-Rod. Oh, no, and him Dallas. and A-Rod. I was like, me and Dallas <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be very fun. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joseph, any final thoughts today? A shout out to Sixo Sanchez making his oh, return. Oh my god! Oh wow! To, to Good double call. A. Good Throwing damn. Throwing eighty-five. At one Six in his pitch. Toes. Two strikeouts. He's back. He's yeah. He looks a, lot, a little heavier, mm-hmm. and he's throwing thirteen miles per hour slower than twenty twenty oh three years ago. Last time he pitched. That's that could be first. problematic. <laughs> it could be, but hey, he's perfect. If, oh, he unless you throw 113. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're, I'm excited for six star <laughs> returning, man. We were, we were worried about him, man. He was disappeared for three years. And uh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> he's back. <laughs> it's good to see. Uh, Jay Hay. So I uh, I hop on the Reddit page every now and then, see what the folks are mm-hmm. talking about, the everyday peoples, just like I do on Discord. So to the Reddit. Um, Still complaining that we don't talk about the Brewers enough. That's exactly right. So I'm <laughs> going to talk about the Brewers. Um, oh, please do. Yep. Uh, <laughs> since August 18th, they are 16 and 6. They have a plus 55 run differential, and that offense that I have called boring, both on Reddit and on the podcast, because it is boring, Um has averaged 5.91 runs per game over that 22-game stretch. That's fifth in Major League Baseball. One specific player offensively to call out is uh, Mark Canicorn. <laughs> Former oh. Oakland A. Great. Um, 853 OPS in 142 plate appearances since becoming a Brewer. Uh, and specifically since August 16th, he slashed 354 or hit 354 with a 452 on base percentage. Holy moly. Um, and then the pitching side. Uh, Burns has been a little bit of a letdown this year. We're all on the same page there. But Brandon Woodruff, uh, my goodness, uh, over his last, uh, I believe it is five starts, 28 innings pitched, 13 hits, three runs. That's a 0.96 ERA. Opponents are hitting 140 off of him. And since the beginning of August, uh, Freddie Peralta and Brandon Woodruff rank third and fourth uh, in ERA in Major League Baseball. So. Um, still got that front three to be afraid of offense, picking it up of late does look like they've put enough distance between them and the Brewers, or I'm sorry, them and the Cubs that the, uh, the central is very likely in the bag for them. Um, wow, but, uh, it. yeah, I just yeah. wanted to give the Brewers some love because, you know, I'm, I'm a man of the people ultimately. Well, Jay, Hay, I'm going to stay right there in Milwaukee and mm. for a good reason, because I, I don't think there's really any denying that since this man has showed up, he has put the offense on his back and they are charging right now. Forecast called for a little rain in Milwaukee. Um, all yesterday. season long. So again, we want to remind you, you can go to brewers.com slash BCF auction. The bidding ends at 1159. Lift off. The Brewers have the lead two to one on Donaldson's first home run as a Brewer. Book Bernie it. loves them. <laughs> Bernie loves Book Josh it. Donaldson. Yeah. I mean, you know what he's hitting, Jay? Hey, they told this guy that he might not swing another bat again in the big leagues this season. He said, mm-hmm. oh, contraire. 
He's sitting 500 right now, Jay Hayden. Wow. 500. Some might say, look, that's small good. sample size at six at bats. Batting that's average good. is important. 500, Jay Hayden. I'll tell you right now, Josh Donaldson has showed up in Milwaukee and made an impact that they haven't seen in years. Years, Jay Hayden. Yeah. Is, there any, is there any concern that how he's going to hit at home? Bring of rain since they have a roof? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. It's going to block, block the rain? <laughs> or is that... <laughs> What is that? What are the th- thoughts? I, I want a pocket-sized Joe to just carry around with me throughout the day. <laughs> it's an interesting conversation, but we saw him do it in Toronto, so I don't have any worries about it. It's an interesting conversation. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish I could take my pants off for you, boy. <laughs> I have <laughs> Uh, I bet you do, Joe. I bet you do. Bet you do. <laughs> Keep your pants on, bud. Yeah. Keep those hey, on, dude. Uh, I have a double final thought if I can get it. Please. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. And it might go it might go further back, but we're running out of time on this podcast. Only twice years. in the last fifteen seasons uh <laughs> has the league leader in batting average gone on to win the World Series. So Wow. 13, 13 uh, of the last fifteen had nothing to do with it, basically. So good stats. Was that Mookie Betts one of them? No, 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 no. Team. A Rod team. Uh, 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 uh. Remember the Braves teams. are first and the A's are last, and that's what it's yeah. all about. Or something. Do the hokey pokey. <laughs> yeah. So the last 15 seasons, uh, only twice has the uh regular season leader in batting average gone on to win the World Series. That's the uh it's actually the 17 Gosh. Astros and the 18 Red Sox were the only two examples. And I've made it back to 08. So it might go further. So could be two in the last fucking five decades. Who the hell knows? Uh, Jake's takes. Uh, just for the record, Dallas's NL Cy Young pick was Justin Verlander, not Spencer Strider. Oh, oh not even in the oh. NL. That's going to be a tough one. So you, yeah. so well, just to recap, oh. your AL Cy Young pick was demoted, and your NL Cy Young pick is not <laughs> in the NL. Is is in the American League? Right. Yikes! Correct. So yeah. I'm going to be an O for this year. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, isn't that a push? Well, isn't that a push? I had. <laughs> That is a push. Yeah, I like that. It's a push. It's a push. You know? Yeah, if you lose, it's a push here. We found out. <laughs> no, no, no. Shut the fuck up. That's not what I mean. You oh, got dis- well, I mean, it's not fair. It's not fair that you're right. picking guys. I should not, not be held. No, I can't yeah. do anything about that. Exactly. So I. I and I, Manoa's I'm not skating. even in the league anymore. You guys should both get pushes so, for that. Get a repick. It's not your fault. He's I like not that. in the league. Like, they didn't get I like a chance. That, Joey. I like that, Joey. Yeah. See, the level headedness, Joe. That's, that that's what we're here for. No, no, it seems like extreme. Great. So vibe. I get off scot free. I like that. No, and same thing with my my, my pick my, with my. Uh, yeah, I'm Garrett absolved pick. of my Cy Young picks. Thank you. I mean, that's been discussed and aired out. We don't have to talk about that again. Uh, still <laughs> resting on my laurels on the Freddie Freeman MVP. Um, yeah, feeling good. You should feel awful. <laughs> feeling good or not for not Freeman. Yeah, let's, just be thankful. let's just be thankful your picks are alive. Right. Paul Goldschmidt. Yeah. All right. Uh, I give this podcast a 9.6. This is a great show. Yep. One of our best. You're welcome. Uh, We will be back tomorrow. Dallas, are you in tomorrow? Yeah. What am I? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't don't know. I don't look at the A schedule. I I leave that to Jake. Jake uh, knows the A schedule. We we leave. We got hosed. We, uh, We got a night game tonight in Houston and then fly home. We got a day off tomorrow. So I'll get back to Oakland at about 1 a.m. And then I got to drive an hour home. <clears throat> so, yeah, but I'll be ready to go because I'm committed to the cause. It doesn't, seem like, Coast time. doesn't seem like the sort of thing. Doesn't seem like I can't believe Manfred did that to you. That's crazy. Yeah, you fucking <laughs> tell it. It's twice. It's twice. Jay got hosed on, on the Seattle roadie earlier. Three night games back home. Not great. That's not my card night. A's go, to, A's go to Vegas and Dallas is installed in some cushy corner office in Manhattan. <laughs> up on that set, uh, up on that seventh floor. I know yeah. all about that I'm not, shit, I'm not, dude. Yeah. I'm not a city guy. You know this. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it never happened. Not in a million years. Yeah. Jay. <laughs> 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 all right. We'll be back tomorrow. See you then. We got.